Welcome to Cadwell Park for the final round of the No Limits Sprint Championships. It's already been one hell of a season and we've got plenty more action coming your way because there's loads of championships still to be decided. One thing is for sure, you are going to want to check this out. Kicking things off, we've got the Metzler Newcomer 600 Series. It's been a fantastic class year long and it's not decided yet. Championship leader Wilfred Watson Turner sits 93 points ahead of Joe Hyam, but with 100 points up for grabs over the course of the weekend, who knows how things are going to end up? Technical issues, but the race gets underway. Nine laps of racing then get started, and it is by the looks of it not Joe Hegan that will have the lead, or he's being challenged at least by Benjamin Williams there of the uh, white number 42 Honda as they went into the first corner. Who gets into Charlie's first? It's Hegan back ahead, though. Hegan has the advantage then. Williams second, and Jonathan Brook by the looks of it slots into third, but Williams now challenging Hegan for the lead going out of Charlie's. Tried to dip to the right hand side of Joe. second lead at the end of the opening lap. I think that's gone out again this time. Still Williams second. Curtis Milburn, by the way, has cleared Thomas Jackson now for third place. So Milburn on the uh, 996 Kawasaki into a rostrum place. Jackson is fourth, then it's Hunt Ward, Holden, Shep will return, by the way, with a possible best lap time this time, 36.2. He's comfortably the fastest man on the track. He's 4.1 seconds behind Jonathan Hunt and was four seconds quicker than him on the previous lap. So Turner could get fifth here, but he should get fifth. Can he get on the rostrum? He might just run out of time. It depends how much uh, Jackson, Milburn and Williams hold each other up. They come across the line pretty much together, those three. With Jackson now confirmed in second. So on to the final lap then. The final remaining question then is whether or not Tom Jackson can uh, hold on to this second position then. Because Curtis Milburn is right behind him again as they come through the goose neck. Now to hang on to second place. He got a good exit there from the chicane as well. So he's pulled a length or so on... Uh, Milburn as they head towards the mountain. Joe Higgum is going to come home to take a race victory. That's Joe Higgum will approach the chequered flag in the next few seconds to take that ninth victory of the year. But behind him, a fifth place finish for Wilfred Turner should be enough for the championship. Higgum comes across the line, then he takes the chequered flag. A dominant victory as it was yesterday for Joe Higgum. Joining him on the roster will be Thomas Jackson and Curtis Milburn, and they finish in that order. Uh, Benjamin Williams comes home in fourth. But your 2021 Metzler Newcomer 600 champion is Wilfred Turner. And he has done it then. From the back of the grid, Wilfred Turner finishes in fifth position. And that is enough to wrap up the 2021 title with two races to spare. Uh, do show your appreciation to them as they come through, especially our champion elect then, Wilfred Turner, who I saw was uh, stood up with both hands in the air as he came across the line there to celebrate the championship. He will know that he's done enough. A fifth place finish for Wilfred gives him 11 championship points. Next up is the Metzler Newcomer 1000, which shares the grid with the Cup 1000. Last time out, we saw Craig Havelock take the crown as the Newcomer 1000 champion, but second and third are still on the table. Likewise, Damien Fricker sealed the Cup 1000 Championship last time out, but it's still a mystery who's going to be joining him in second and third places in that series. ...toward the other riders, and then the green flag is out, and we will now get ready to go racing then for nine laps here at Cadwell Park. Lute Wells on pole position, Peter Eccles alongside him, the highest of the newcomers, the lights go out, away we go. Looks like everyone got going in the end, so the uh, course of the yellow flag uh, managed to sort their problem out and get off the line okay. Through Coppice we go for the first time. Half straight is two of them together for the race lead then, and it is uh, number four, Peter Eccles, that's ahead of Tony Wells. But Wells comes back up alongside him now as they go up the park straight and tries to get that lead back again into park corner. All of them safely through the first couple of corners, out towards the top end of the circuit. And Tony Wells looking to try and clear these newcomers and build a gap as he did yesterday. So Tony Wells then, uh, by the looks of it, back into the lead now as he heads towards the mountain. 
as we said, though, really the battle is likely to be between Peter Eccles and Lee Shalito for that uh, newcomer house victory behind him. Day. The leaders then come across the start finish line absolutely together. Peter Eccles well and truly taking the fight here to uh, Tony Wells. Eccles was back ahead again when they crossed the line and they're side by side through Charlie's and sweeping around the outside. That was Wells, I think, getting the lead back, but that was a really brave move uh, to go around the outside of the second part of Charlie. So Wells back in front then, Eccles second, and Lee Shalito some 1.3 seconds behind him in third place. So race leaders then are already up the fence. Suppose the tail end of the field which is coming out of Charlie's little part straight now. So Again, there's a good chance as we approach half race distance now that uh, the leaders will find a bit of traffic before the end of the race. Not too much of it though, hopefully. It's strange how those sector times are fluctuating so much. Someone could be half a second faster than someone in one sector, but then over the course of the lap, it doesn't really seem to come to anything really. So it's all changing around there. That's going to be a very different running order when they get to the line this time than it was at the start of the lap, I think. Now, I think the number I just heard the marshal saying was 79. 79, I think, has fallen at the chicane. That would be Tony Wells. It is. Tony Wells has crashed from the lead at the chicane. And that means that Peter Eccles inherits first position. So he may not have been able to catch Wells on pace, but he was applying enough pressure that Wells has thrown it down the road at the chicane. So Eccles moves into the lead then. Shalito goes second. And Michael Needham moves up to third place. That is uh, real drama then for Tony Wells. Right, the uh, ninth lap of the race now starts. We're on to the last lap. And all of a sudden, Lee Shalito is catching the race leader, Peter Eccles. That gap came down by about two and a half seconds on the last lap. It sits at eight tenths going on to the final lap. Then into the mountain section. Again, Shalito has three race victories to his name already this season. Is it about to become a fourth? The answer is no, but it was number four, Peter Eccles wins it. Then number 44, Lee Shalito is second with number 25, Michael need them seven seconds further back in third do give them a round of applause as they come through because that was a really close race it is the number four bike though that manages to get the race victory uh, fourth place goes to number 42 uh, which was Matthew Taylor. Fifth place for number 26, Mark Little, after a fighting ride. Uh, sixth place went to Gavin Watts. So Gavin Watts got back ahead of number 344, four, Andrew Williams, on the last lap. Those two traded places uh, three or four times over the second half of that race, and it's Watts that gets the sixth place in the end from Williams. Seventh, number 155. <laughs> Next up is a race with three championships still undecided. The protectmyincome.com Cup 600, the Pre-Injection 600, and the Moto 46 Street Bike Cup. The protectmyincome.com Cup 600 sees the top three in the championship separated by only 48 points. Smart, Stero, and Fielding are going to be giving it everything they can to pick up that coveted crown. Moving on to the pre-injection 600 class, the top two, Paul Rogers and Sean Evans, are only separated by 21 points. As for the Moto 46 Street Bike Cup, it's looking to be an absolute slugfest as the top four are separated by only 53 points. With so many championships being fought on the same grid, one thing's for sure, this race is going to keep us on our toes. Right then, nine laps of racing to decide the outcome of three of the No Limits Sprint Championships here. The green flag is waved at the back. The red lights will go on. We're about to go racing for the final time this year in Cup 600 and the Street Bike Cup. Revs start to rise. Off they go then. Andrew Smart and Michael Stero wheel to wheel towards the first corner. They're absolutely neck and neck into the left hander at Coppice Corner. Couldn't quite see from here who got the advantage, but we'll find out in a second or so as they come through the double apex right hander at Charlie's and roll down the park straight. It is, I reckon, John Woodcock actually is that that's got the lead. Yeah, it is. It's Woodcock ahead of Stero with Smart as they flashed through. It's a four bike breakaway then as they go towards the goose tank for the first time with Tommy Fielding. I think the fourth of both bikes in line. Down the hill they go and Stero has got the lead. Michael Stero has got the lead but Woodcock goes up the inside of him at Mansfield Corner and gets the lead back again. John Woodcock is not going to play nicely with these championship fighters. Wheel to wheel into the chicane and Stero has to sit up to avoid uh, hitting John Woodcock there. 
and that will lose his speed on the exit. Andrew Smart moves on the inside of Stereo to attack into the mountain, but he can't quite get there. And I think Stereo held on to second place, but that was a really scary moment for Michael Stereo, who tried to get the lead back from Woodcock into the chicane. He had to sit up to avoid hitting him, and so, so nearly ended up getting unseated in the process. <laughs> the race leader try and back Stero up into the fourth place rider maybe. Time we are halfway through the race and that is when Michael Stero has made his decisive move. Now it's out of Stero's hands he just needs to get out of there make sure that Woodcock can't retaliate. Andrew Smart is the one that the onus is well and truly on now. Stero with the lead Woodcock second but with Andrew Smart in third bit of traffic ahead now. Uh, now we've got a bike I believe that's stopped or has crashed at the mountain and is in the track so is this going to mean a red flag is this all going to be put on hold then uh, this would be really dramatic stuff then as they cross the line yes the red flag is out the red flag is out on the seventh lap of the race and Michael Stero is leading with Andrew Smart in third now if they don't restart it I think that that gives Stero the championship does I think Michael Stero has just won the championship in the a really unfortunate set of circumstances to do it with a red flag, but Michael Stero, uh, I think, is going to win the... Yes, the chequered flag is being shown. That is it, the end of the race then. So Michael Stero will win the race. It's only his third victory of the season, and for the second year in a row, Andrew Smart is going to be denied the championship. It's happened to him in Newcomer 600s last year, and unbelievably, it looks like it's going to happen again. Yes. Michael Stero is going to be given the race victory and Andrew Smart will have to settle for third position and in the most dramatic of circumstances by two points Michael Stero is going to take the championship from Andrew Smart who must be wondering what on earth he has to do to win one of these championships he was three tenths of a second behind John Woodcock I think he was about to start really attacking John for that second place and if he'd have got it before the red flag that would have been enough he'd have won the championship but uh, he didn't and he isn't the champion. It is going to be provisionally Michael Stero. We'll get official confirmation of that in a moment or two. delivered this year has been the CF Moto UK Twins category. So while the Super Twins Championship has well and truly been decided, the Standard Twins are well up for grabs. Tommy Downs and Robert Charles are separated by only 29 points, so the championship really could go either way this weekend. Also on the same grid are the CV500s and Modern Retro 400s, which have already had both their championships decided. flag and I think there was a smoky bike towards the back of the grid so they were just 
uh, halting the start of the race for a few minutes until, or a few seconds, I should say, until we knew what the situation was there. But I think they've now been given the all clear to start the race. So we are ready to go for nine laps of racing then here in the CF Moto UK Super and Standard Twins, CB500s and Modern and Retro 400s. We do now get a green flag at the back of the grid. Keep an eye then on the red number 83 of Robert Childs, the blue number 17 of Tommy Downs. They are your championship contenders in the Standard Twins class. They both start on the front row and they both now accelerate towards the first corner then. There's one that doesn't get going at the back of the grid. That might have been smoke up. It still hasn't got going, so that might be a non-starter then. just hang on so if Tommy Down stays where he is he would hang on by two points to the championship but he cannot afford to lose any more places uh, Johnny Hedges is the next bike behind him triple seven and he is also a standard twin so basically if Johnny Hedges gets past Tommy Downs then Robert Childs is the champion so Taylor second is 12.3 seconds back Tommy Downs is then a further eight seconds back now Downs has suddenly backed off and been caught by Holland and Cramond. That was a really slow lap from Tommy, about four seconds off the pace. Remember, though, he could let both of those two through and still take the title, but the red flag is out. The red flag is out, and that will, I guess, be the end of the race. We just hit two-thirds race distance. That was the seventh lap we were on of nine. So I doubt that we will get a restart. And that means for the second time today, we're going to get a champion crowd a little bit prematurely with a red flag, just as things were starting to get a little tasty as well there with the Cramond and Holland catching him. Next is the Pirelli Super Series 600 Championship, which shares the grid with the Premier 600 and the Ducati class. The Super Series 600 Championship is still undecided, seeing the top three, Talbot, Alderson and Fisher, separated by only 58 points. The Ducatis look to have an exciting weekend ahead of them, as the top three are split by just 14 points. Whereas Scott Stone can rest assured that his championship is well and truly safe, as he was crowned champion at round six. Lights out, then away they go towards the first corner. And uh, Joe Tyler from the 49 looks to try and get the whole shot into the first turn. There's a big, spectacular crash further back at the gooseneck. Uh, Ryder is up and fine, but the bike took a huge, huge tumble. Six seconds the lead for Talbot then. 
Fisher is then one and a half seconds ahead of Wells, who is two and a half ahead of this battle for fourth place. And then there's quite a good battle for sixth going on down the hill as well. You've got uh, Mark Bridger, who crashed yesterday at the front of that group, the Black Machine. away from Finley Arscott. Leader, um, leader goes on to the final lap of the race then, for that fourth place battle to come through. Here comes Arscott fourth, but they were actually side by side across the line, Arscott and Roby. So did the Triumph manage to get through? Was it getting the Kawasaki? No, it's the Triumph ahead. So Dan Roby's done it. He's got into fourth place then ahead of Finley Arscott. So as they go through the uh, left-hander of Mansfield for the final time, the leader, Joe Tolbert, is heading towards the chequered flag. It's going to be another race victory for the man that won the first five races of the season on the bounce. And he gets another race victory here at Cadwell Park. Then Joe Tolbert, the champion in the Pirelli Super Series 6 Pirelli Super Series 1000 with some of the very best riders in the club pitching out to decide the championship. Josh Daly only sits 54 points behind Luke Hopkins in the Pirelli Super Series 1000 championship, so expect one hell of a fight. Running in tandem with that class is the Premier 1000s. We've got an all-out brawl as the top five, Coughlin, Creswell, Major Bird, Patterson and Norton are all separated by 73 points. I think we're in for a real show here, Let's see who comes out on top. Green flag, I think I saw being waved. Yep, there it is at the back of the grid. So let's go racing. Pirelli Super Series 1000 Championship supported by Premier 1000. The red lights go on, the revs start to rise. They go out now, we're away in racing then. And Luke Hopkins tries to accelerate the Honda from pole position. And it looks like he will hold on to the advantage then. to uh, Craig Neves threat. Luke Hopkins with a new fastest lap of the race, 129.495. He's now back up to a second clear. So now the gap is bigger than it's been at any other point. Well, let's check in, shall we, with the Premier Thousands then. So it's Coglan and Cresswell we're watching for. Uh, Coglan 
is only 10th in class. Uh, but where is Cresswell? Cresswell is 6th. So at the moment, Cresswell is outscoring Coughlin by a handful of points, which means that uh, he would move into the championship lead then if things stay as they are. Ah, Lee Devonport has got past Robert Cresswell. So just as John Coughlin lost a place, uh, Cresswell does as well. So uh, Cresswell needs to try and get that back if he can. As the leaders go on to their final lap of the race then, Creswell, is he going to be able to catch the black and green bike ahead of him? I'm not convinced he will, actually. Although that big group of bikes, they are starting to trip over each other. That's the group that um, Tom Norton had been in. Already in the final sector, can see that third place battle just going into the mountain now, which means that Luke Hopkins and Craig Neve are approaching and in fact have just taken the chequered flag. Luke Hopkins then, the champion in a Pirelli Super Series 1000 and he rounds out the season with another victory. Craig Neve fought him hard in the early stages there, but has to settle for second place. And Robert Creswell displayed true fighting spirit there to come home and get the result. So that is fourth place in class for Robert Creswell. That's 13 points for him. John Coughlin gets 11, which means that Coughlin misses out on the championship by three championship points. Incredible. fantastic round here at Cadwell Park and a fantastic season with No Limits Racing. It really has been a hell of a show. Congratulations to all those people that have won a championship and likewise to all those guys and girls that have got out there and had a belter of a time year long. We hope to see you next year where there's going to be plenty more action. In fact, why don't you even get stuck in and do a bit yourself.